Hey, welcome to Understanding Gradle. In the first 14 videos of this series, I explained fundamental Gradle concepts, most of which you will find used in almost any larger Gradle build. In this and the upcoming videos, I want to get into some concepts that build on these fundamentals and, while not adding anything new to the very core of Gradle, are still very useful to make a build setup more comprehensive and better supported by tooling like IDEs. One central thing here are so-called source sets, which we are going to talk about this time. Now, if we look at our example project, we've already encountered the source set concept. If we look at one of our sub-projects, we find that the source code and other resources are located in a folder structure specifically marked in the IDE. So we have, for example, the main Java folder for production code, the main resources folder for production resources, and the test Java folder for test code. The IDE knows that these folders contain our source code because in greater terms they are marked as part of the source set. With the knowledge where sources are located, the IDE can offer us additional functionality, like navigating from one class to another between different projects, for example. Let's disregard the source set idea for a moment and look at the tasks Gradle uses to build our Java code. Now, if we remember what I talked about in the video about task inputs and outputs, this could be set up like this. The compile Java task takes the sources as input and produces Java class files, which the Java task takes as input. Same with the process resources task. With a task setup like this, Gradle would know if we call the Java task that the other tasks need to be called before and where to find the files to process. So this would be enough for Java compilation for Gradle. But with this, the information where the sources are located would be quite hidden inside the task configuration for other tools like the IDE. Here, the source set concept comes into play to gather all this information, which is then automatically filled into the task configurations. So a source set is essentially a data structure to configure where sources are located, which tasks are used to compile or build them, and where destinations for what the tasks are building are configured, which are usually multiple folders inside the build folder. Then a task like the jar task can take all the outputs of a source set and zip them. So a source set is a rich model containing a lot of information about different kinds of sources and where these are located, how these are built, and where the results of building or compiling them is located. Other information, like the compile class path, for example, is also associated with the source set. If you customize your build setup, you can use the source set as a central point to modify conventions or to get information for additional tasks you might want to set up. So how does this look in practice? Let's go to our base convention plugin. So the source set is a concept added by the Java plugin. So wherever you use any of the Java plugins, the source set extension is available. And also, by default, two source sets are already created, the main source set and the test source set, which you can both access here. Since this is added by the Java plugin, all JVM Gradle projects like Java, Groovy, Scala or Kotlin JVM projects have source sets available like this. But because the concept is quite useful for any kind of Gradle build that wants to integrate with an IDE, other plugins add a similar source set concept as well. So Android projects and Kotlin multi-platform projects, for example, also have source sets, just with a different API. I'll shortly get into this at the end of this video. Now, as I mentioned, a source set is containing a lot of information. So I won't show everything and every detail you can configure here. You may explore the API to see what different things are available and can be configured. One important thing to note that a source set is actually a combination of several source directory sets. If we look at the project structure, we see that there's a main folder, but inside the main folder, there's a Java folder, but possibly also the resources folder. Or if we add, for example, Groovy support, there would also be a Groovy folder. Each of these folders is usually linked to a source directory set, and all the source directory sets are then combined to the main source set. So if we look at com configuring the main source set here, we can do configuration only for the Java part, so for the Java source directory set, and for the resources source directory set. So for example, one of the things we can do here is actually change the folder 
where the source is allocated, which you might need to do if for some reason you don't want to follow the standard project layout of Maven and Gradle. Note that the set source DS method we are using here is replacing the configuration. There's also a source DS method where you can add additional folders. So multiple folders can provide the sources for one source directory set. You can also create additional source sets yourself. Let's do this and create source set which we call extra feature. When you create a source set, the model the source set provides is already filled following all the conventions that is also used for the existing source sets like main and test. Based on these conventions, Gradle will already create some things along with the source set that you will most likely need. For example, a task to compile the Java sources in the new source set will be registered and configured, and you will get dependency configurations for defining implementation or API or runtime only dependencies for the sources in your new source set. There are other things that Gradle does not set up automatically, but which you can use to add some things. For example, we can register a jar task to build a jar from the sources of our new source set. And we can ask the source set for its combined output, which are all the folders filled by the tasks registered with the source set to build or compile its sources. Now if we create a new folder here in the IDE, it already suggests us to add the extra feature folder for sources. This is knowledge the IDE now got from Gradle because we registered this new source set. Let's put a class into the source set that uses some external library. To get access to the external library, we can now define a dependency in the build file using the new configurations for this that were automatically added when we registered the source set. So note that in this default setup, the new source set is completely independent from the existing main source set. It is like implementing some completely separated features inside one project. How and when this can be useful and how these can be connected is something we'll talk about in the next video. For now, we just keep this as independent code, which we can also build and produce a jar file. So if we call the extra feature jar task, which is the new jar task we registered, Gradle will compile and package the sources from our extra feature source set. These are the basics about configuring and creating source sets and configuring the source directory sets within them. With this, a lot of use cases like optional features, additional test sets or test fixtures can be realized. For this, Gradle offers additional functionality on top of the source set concept. We we'll look at these in the next videos. But before we end, I would also quickly like to show you how you can add an additional source directory set and why you might want to do it and how source sets are found in other projects than Java or JVM projects. Let's have another look at our convention plugin. Often a new source directory set is added to all your source sets automatically through a plugin. So for example, if we apply the Groovy plugin, all the source sets, the existing ones and the ones we are adding will get a Groovy source directory set in addition to the Java source directory set and the resources source directory set. You can see this in the IDE that you could now create a Groovy folder and add Groovy sources to this. And the Groovy plugin did all the setup so that basically our source set models grew richer with more information, which has the effect, for example, that also the Groovy compilation will run when we build a jar. Now in very specific cases, you might want to add a source directory set directly yourself to one of your source sets. Unfortunately, there is not yet a public API for that, but there is an internal extension from Gradle for now which you can register and use. One use case for this is adding another Java source directory set for compiling Java code with a different Java version, which is then only loaded if the JVM running the code is compatible with that version. Doing the setup like I'm showing here will add a separate compile Java task for this additional source code and configure it such that it puts the compiled code under the meter in folder, which is the format for so-called multi-release jars, where Java will automatically discover that there is code for specific versions and load it depending on which version you are running on. Doing it like this makes, in this case, a Java 17 folder available under main as an additional source directory set in our projects. Now, as I mentioned, not only the Java JVM plugins delivered with Gradle offer a source set concept, 
but also, for example, the Android plugins and the Kotlin multi-platform plugins. In the example, which I share on GitHub, as always, I added two projects, one for Android and one for Kotlin multi-platform, where you can see how you can find the source sets in such projects. They have a different but similar API to the normal Gradle Java source sets and can also be used to configure the location of sources in these kind of projects. Have a look at the example if you are interested in this. This was an overview of the source set concept in Gradle. As I mentioned, source sets are the basis for a number of interesting features Gradle Core offers. And we will look at these in the next videos. So if you don't want to miss them, subscribe to this channel. See you next time.